Good evening. Our spiritual reading tonight will be taken from the glories of Mary by St. Alphonsus Liguori. During this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of my friends are calling me asking for assistance especially for their sick relatives. You know, if you love somebody, you want a security, not just physical, but also spiritual. Now, because of the restriction given by civil and by ecclesiastical authorities to shut down the church and even to forbid the sacraments of the Eucharist, as well as the sacrament of confession. What happens to those who are dying and they are in the state of mortal sin? You know, it's a very distressing uh, situation when some priests are cold, but because they're scared of the restriction given by their bishops, they do not want to respond to the call of someone who is dying. Remember, in danger of death, the salvation of souls is the highest law and all kinds of mandates do not count. We are supposed to save souls. We are good shepherds and we know from the scriptures that the good shepherd is willing to give his life just to protect his flock from the wolves. Now, Catechism 1035 tells us, with one mortal sin, unconfessed and unrepented, when the person dies, he doesn't enter the kingdom of heaven. He goes to hell. This will be the worst scenario that will happen to people who, because of this pandemic restriction, priests cannot minister to them. So here, we have something to remind all of you, especially the members of the Alliance of the Holy Family International, that we should not despair. Many are having some panic experience, others are so distressful because of the uneasiness of the situation. When will all this end? But this is something very consoling that even amidst the restriction of the ecclesiastical and the civil authorities to forbid priests from going to the hospital in the intensive care unit in order to administer the last rite for the dying, we still have possibilities in order to be saved. People who will practice what you will hear now will not go to hell. They will be assured to go to heaven. And which are the two devotions given us by the Blessed Mother that will help us in the most difficult moments of our life, when we find ourselves all alone, sick in the hospital, with no one to minister to us, not even our own friends and relatives, we find ourselves just among doctors and among nurses who are also scared to death in trying to help us. But just the same, we should not lose hope. The Hail Holy Queen is really something that we have to treasure. Mary is our hope. Here on page 206, it says, 
The Divine Mother once addressed these words to St. Bridget. I am the mother of all souls in purgatory. For all the pains that they have deserved for their sins are every hour as long as they remain there in some way mitigated by my prayers. Now we're talking here of purgatory. But listen to what St. Albert the Great says, a doctor of the church. He says, there are many souls who are supposed to be in hell because of their mortal sins. Yet, because of the Blessed Virgin Mary, they are now in heaven. Isn't it that beautiful? that even a soul in the state of mortal sin, even if he has not confessed this in the sacrament of reconciliation, he can still go to heaven. How? Here the Blessed Mother tells us the two ways. One, by praying the rosary. Another one, by consecration wearing the scapular, the brown scapular of Mount Carmel. Now, with these two devotions to the Blessed Mother, she assures us we will go to heaven. Let's take the first one. We have here the case of a certain Alexandria. What happened to Alexandria? This was related by Father Eusebius Nierimberg. In the city of Aragon, there was a beautiful young lady of noble birth named Alexandra, who was courted by two young men. Out of jealousy, they one day fought and both were killed. Their enraged relatives, considering the young lady as the cause of their sad death, murdered her, cut off her head, and threw it into a well. Some days afterwards, Saint Dominic, of course, the founder of the Dominican order, passing by the spot and inspired by God, went to the well and cried out, Alexandra, come out. In an instant, the head of the murdered woman came up and remained on the edge of the well and entreated the saint to hear her confession. The saint did so. And in the presence of an immense concourse of people, drawn there by the wonderful event, gave her Holy Communion. He then commanded her to say, for what reasons she had received so great a grace. Alexandria, or Alexandra rather, replied, that when her head was cut off, she was in mortal sin. But that, on account of the rosary, she was in the habit of saying in her hour, the most blessed Virgin Mary kept her alive. The animated head remained for two days on the edge of the well, so as to be seen by all. And after that, the soul went to purgatory. A fortnight afterwards, Alexandra appeared, beautiful and shining like a star, to Saint Dominic, and said that the rosary recited for the souls in purgatory is one of the greatest reliefs that they meet in their moments of torments. 
And that as soon as ever they get to heaven, they pray earnestly for those who have performed this devotion for them. Hardly had she said this when St. Dominic saw her happy soul ascend with the greatest joy to the kingdom of the blessed in heaven. Isn't it that beautiful? Why was Alexandra saved? It was because she was in the habit of praying the rosary. So if we pray the rosary every day, it is a guarantee of our salvation. Of course, a lot of people will say, what is the rosary? As Paul VI in Mariale Sculto says, the rosary is nothing else but a mini Bible. It is a prayer of 50 Hail Marys. Every decade, you're supposed to meditate on the mysteries of the Blessed Mother in relation with Jesus Christ. We have the three uh, mysteries originally, the joyful, sorrowful, and the glorious mysteries. Then, what was added by John Paul II was the luminous mysteries. So now we have the four mysteries. Now, when we are praying the rosary, all the six says, it is a mini Bible meditating on the mysteries of the mini Bible because we are practically meditating on the life death and resurrection of Jesus. Life, joyful mystery. Death, sorrowful mystery. And glorious mystery is the resurrection of Jesus. That's the reason why the rosary is a very pleasing prayer to God. And when Mary asks for the grace, God always accede to the request of the Blessed Mother as we know it. So that's one. By praying the rosary every day, even if you have not gone to confession earlier, Mary will see to it that a good priest will come to your rescue. And this is not something, you know, out of the blues. It happened in my very own experience. I was working in Salishana Publishers, and all of a sudden, 1.30 in the afternoon, I felt restless, you know, editing all the time books and books and books and books, sometimes a lot of sleepless nights. I said, I need press air. And I wanted to try the new car that we bought for our service, you know. So I just went out. And when I was driving, I saw a tall building and I said, oh, curious. I wanna see what this tall building is. I'm interested because formerly, you know, uh, I also took up engineering. And so I know whether a building is good or not. It's a ninth floor or more building. I stopped and then I went inside and said, oh, this is quite modern. I realized it was a hospital. So I walk in. As soon as I went to the lobby, a beautiful woman said, we had been waiting for you. What took you so long? I said, me? Yes, because they saw my color. You're a priest. Come, somebody's dying. And immediately we went to uh, the dying person and uh, she was still praying the rosary with the relatives and I heard her confession. And after the confession and giving the last rite, she died. So this soul, I'm sure, was saved because 
of the habit of praying the rosary. So never miss the family rosary. Remember Father Patrick Payton. He said, a family that prays together stays together. And not only that, if you pray the rosary every day, Saint Dominic said, surely the mother of God will see to it that you will not go to hell. You will go to heaven. Now, the problem is that you will stay a little longer in purgatory. What to do so that you can shorten your stay in purgatory? And for us Catholics, St. Thomas Aquinas says purgatory is like hell when it comes to the fire that purifies us so that before we go to heaven, we are really so cleansed to be worthy of the glorious presence of our Lord. Now he said, it's not a joke to be burned there for a long time. And so a lot of souls in purgatory, they come and ask for help. That's why we have this prayer of the souls in purgatory. So how do we shorten the stay in purgatory? One way is by the escapular, the devotion to the escapular of Mount Carmel. I'll read to you here a beautiful uh, uh, passage on page 208 of the Glories of Mary. The promise made by our Blessed Lady to Pope John the 22nd is well known. She appeared to him and ordered him to make known to all that on the Saturday after their death, she would deliver from purgatory all who wore the Carmelite scapular. So this is the Carmelite scapular. See this? All right. And we know the short history of this, right? St. Simon Stock, while praying, the Blessed Mother appeared and gave him this scapular and said, if people will wear this, and have devotion to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, the Saturday after their death, the Blessed Mother will bring them to the kingdom of heaven. Now, these are the conditions imposed by John the 22nd, which was later on by several other pontiffs through a bull like Pope Alexander V, Clement VII, Pius V, Gregory XIII, and Paul V. Christian people may piously believe that the Blessed Virgin Mary will help them after death by her continual intercession, her merits, and special protection and that on Saturdays the day consecrated by the church to the Blessed Virgin Mary, she will, in a more particular manner, help the souls of the brethren of the confraternity of our Blessed Lady of Mount Carmel, who have departed this life in the state of grace provided they wore the habit, observed the chastity of their state, and recited her office. Now, what if you don't know the office of uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel? There is an alternative. If they could not recite it, if they have observed the fast of the church, Basically, the mandatory fast in the Catholic Church are only two. We have Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. 
So if you fasten on this, well, the conditions here applied to scapular will be also applied to you. And so I repeat the four conditions. Number one, you should be in the state of grace. Number two, you should live at least chastity in your state of life. Number three, you should wear all the time the scapular. Number four, you should have fasted during the uh, fast days in the Catholic Church. Now, if we do this, the Blessed Mother promises us that the Saturday after our death, she will bring us to heaven. Now, what if, for instance, you died on a Monday? Well, if you died on a Monday, you have to wait a little longer. Monday, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday you go to heaven. You have to stay five days more in purgatory. Now, what if you died on a Wednesday? Well, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three more days in purgatory. You died on a Friday. Well, stay there for at least one day in purgatory, <clears throat> and then you go to heaven. You died on a Saturday. Ah, that's beautiful. You go to heaven. And uh, I think it was uh, five months ago when one of our Covenanted members who was very faithful to her rosary every day and she wears the scapular. Of course, she observes the four requirements imposed in the bull of John the 20, uh, 22nd, not 23rd, 22nd. And together with all the other popes who reconfirmed it during their term. She died of cancer in the breast and uh, she died on a Saturday. And as we all know, she goes straight to heaven after she died. And of course, uh, through dreams, we know what happens to the soul. I had the privilege to dream about her because she's one of our coordinators and a lawyer. She's also the lawyer helping us in many of our legal problems. When I had the dream, I saw her so beautiful, bedecked with jewels and so on, in white dress. I knew for a fact that she's already in heaven. A confirmation that after she died, she went straight to heaven. The night when she died, I had a dream. And I saw her so beautiful. And so this confirms that through scapular, the soul shortens her stay in purgatory. So with the rosary and the scapular, my beloved brothers and sisters in the Alliance of the Holy Family International, you are assured that even in cases when you cannot find priests, the Blessed Mother will make sure a priest will come to you. How? I don't know, but it happens. Even amidst this pandemic restriction, there's still a lot of good priests who, if privately, you approach them without putting them on the spot. Because if you put them on the spot, there will be a witch hunt and they'll be in trouble with their bishops. 
they will also be in trouble with the civil authorities. One of our Army of Victim Priests called me up from Australia that they fine from the government if they caught you celebrating mass or administering to your, to your uh, uh, parishioners is 11,000 Australian dollars. So nobody wants that. But you approach this person privately, and I'm sure he, being a good shepherd, he will do everything, even at the expense of his life, in order to minister to whoever is in need. Provided also that the hospital allows this person to go inside. In Mexico, for instance, there are a lot of Catholic doctors there. They allow the priests to minister to those patients who have COVID-19 and they are in danger of dying. So don't despair on condition that you pray the rosary every day, on condition that you wear the scapular, surely the Lord will send you the Blessed Mother to assist you in order that instead of going to hell, even when you're in the state of mortal sin, for so many reasons, so difficult to go to church, so difficult to get the priest. Some people said, oh, finally, after three months, I was able to go to confession. Don't be distressed. Cling on to your rosary, lead the family rosary every day. Then that's the best way to secure your family, physically and spiritually. If they don't make it here physically, at least in heaven, they will be there for eternity, where one day all of us will go there. If, of course, we are in the state of grace. So cheer up. There is hope. With the Blessed Mother, surely she is our hope. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you.